Yep, and we are rolling. What is 5G? Where is it? How does it affect me and my family? Are there any studies talking about the health effects of it? 5G is the next generation telecommunication service. There's been one to 4G before it. Everything you use today is 4G. 5G is the next generation that almost fundamentally changes how the infrastructure of services change. They're using a combination of various known technologies, stuff that have been around for a long time in the 4G space, and then there's some new stuff in the 5G, particularly them, those that are the small cell towers that are being in front of your home. So it's a combination of a whole lot of things merging together to provide end-to-end -end service. It's, it's service that is orders of magnitude more speeds. It allows far more density of use. There's so many benefits that are being uh, established in the industry. The flip side of that, of course, there's not been one study that says the new technologies being delivered are safe. So what we're finding is that when they're using certain aspects of this network, we're going into a new domain. And to answer your question about it, is it dangerous to your family? No one can tell you that. Why? We have no idea through research or study if it's dangerous or not. If I was to extrapolate, however, I know, for example, that the gut, the microbiome of your gut, when you're exposed to 4G RF signals, it disrupts the gut. And as you may know, the bugs in your gut are 10 times more than cells in your body. So we know for sure immune system potentially can be impacted. We know that antibiotics, you become more resistant when you use 4G. And there is a little bit of research that's coming out around 20 gigahertz. And we know that bugs like it. Is that a problem? Could be. From past history, we know from research and science that it has been up to this point, and we may see that kind of problem get worse. Um, in general, there's been very little study of the higher speeds uh, that's being used in 5G, particularly around the, the small cell. And that small cell, typically over the next year or so, is going to be around 23 gigahertz to about 60 gigahertz they use technology in which they take antennas, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, phase array of the antennas, and they actually can target a signal directly towards you and your cell phone. In fact, it's going to look for where you are, and it's going to focus on that. When they do, they're using multiple paths of data, MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. That's going to focus into that cell phone, that router, whatever the, the, the end point is, and that's twice the number of transmission signals currently today. You have one signal going to you today, and um, then in 5G, cell towers, uh, the small cells, they're going to be two. Is that going to be a bad situation? I don't know. No one can tell you. But one for things for sure, we should be careful as we move ahead. And you really do need to know that these technologies that are evolving uh, to, pry, to provide the, the, what they're saying is a high demand for bandwidth um, bring some risk to us. And we really don't know the magnitude of that risk. Does the United States allow a higher allowable amount of radiation from cell phones than other countries? And if so, why? It turns out that the strength of the signal, 1.6 watt per kilogram, that the FCC has approved in 1987, 
is twice typically the power levels of signals in Europe. So in Europe, there's less concern, there's more concern about the health, and as a result, the standards bodies have reduced the signals to maybe a more acceptable level. The US, however, is the highest of levels. What would you say to a teenager who speaks on their cell phone four or five hours a day? You have troubles because the standards we just spoke about, the FCC standards, were created for a six foot male, six minutes use, and um, only the thermal impacts. So the standard basically says your, 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 your cell phone can heat you up by two degrees. And that standard signal for a six foot male goes in your head two inches. That's what the standard is, and it's thermal. They used military models for that, and that's how they derived the standard. A child, by the way, it represents 3% of the marketplace. That standard was, you're not six foot male, you're five foot male. Your wife is a five foot female. Your children are four foot terrors. Everyone has a different impact with that beyond the six foot male. If you're a small child, six years old, chances are the signal goes completely through your head. If you have a teenager, which was your question, it probably goes through half his head because the density of the skull, the interference from the skin uh, is not sufficient to only allow the signal to go in two degrees. So they're using it multiple hours at a time, which the standard didn't reflect. And all science that we see today, all the research that we have, it doesn't look at the thermal. It looks at the biological impacts. Anger of our kids, Alzheimer's, ADHD. Uh, these are known connected kind of conditions that have been linked to cell phone use. And anger with their kids. It's, it's growing. You can see from scientific evidence that we've seen a trend in a lot of the behavioral issues with kids. Some are suggesting uh, there are many environmental uh, uh, conditions outside of the RF signal, but also there are others who are saying, no, there's a direct link to the frontal lobe. And by the way, science now can actually measure it, the anger um, uh, when you have a cell phone influence in the brain. So we're beginning to get evidence that it really does affect the behavior, the biological response of the body.